back of three starts as well. How are you enjoying your, your run in the first team? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously it's good to be playing with the lads. The set of lads are great and it's just nice to be involved. And I know I've been on the bench, but to be actually playing is an extra bonus for me, really. After last year, I was not coming to play, didn't play. And this year I've come in and been on the bench and now I've started three games on the bounce and hopefully the weekend another one. Liam's obviously been out recently, you've come in for him. How much on a personal level are you hoping to keep those places when Liam comes back? Yeah, I think it's just down to me now, really. I've been given my chance and obviously now I've played three, I want to play more and more and make it impossible for Rice to come back in. Are you satisfied with your performances so far? Is there anything you you look at you think you can work on a bit more? Yeah, you can, you can always get better, I guess, obviously. I think getting forward, I'll probably get forward a bit more. But obviously as I get more comfortable and get more games out that'll come and on Liam just how supportive has he been from the sidelines as well yeah he's a great lad Liam and obviously I drive him with him as well so obviously he's talks to me talks to me every day and says I want you to do better than me and just encourages really and that's what you need as a young player tell us about we'll we'll come on to the Bradford City side of things and being from here but you had a spell at Como was it yeah T- tell us yeah. a bit about that um personally for me and my girlfriend and my little one, it wasn't the culture for us. It wasn't as professional as over here. Um, I won't go into detail why, but it was just the culture wasn't for us and I just wasn't enjoying it. Was it a case you, you wanted to come back over to England as, as soon as possible, really? Yeah, I went. I think I went in October and I came back at Christmas and I made my decision at Christmas that I wanted to stay over here because we had trouble coming over with Christmas anyway with coronavirus and that didn't help over there because it was... You couldn't go anywhere or anything, so for me and the family, it was just just wasn't for us. How did you spend those couple of months? Were you just training and then back at home and just inside, really? Yeah, literally, we tra- we started early and we finished about six. So it was the whole day gone. Mrs. Little one at home doing nothing because obviously you can't go anywhere. And then when I get home, they want to do stuff, but there's nothing to do for them. So it's it was quite depressing, really, for the for all for us all. Did you pick up any cooking skills while you're out there at all, or? No, we had one restaurant that was open, which was, which was quite nice and picked up the language a little bit. But it's a tough language to pick up, though. Back in England then, you rejoined here in January, hometown club, came through the academy. How does it feel being, being back at Bradford City? It's brilliant. So when you come and watch when you were young and you think, I want to play in front of these fans, and then I've got my chance to play in front of the fans, it's incredible. And that contract as well, it got extended, obviously, at the back end of last season. It's until this summer... What aims have you got long term going going on beyond the summer? I take it you want to extend that contract even further and, and stake a place for this first team? Yeah, definitely. I want I want a contract after contract after contract at Bradford if that's if that's what happens and, and we get promoted and move on. And hopefully we can this season we can push on from Saturday now. How's it been working under Derek? Yeah, he's, he's strict and he knows what he wants and he gets his point across quick, which some managers don't like doing that and which obviously the gaffer does. And it works with the lads, obviously. Yeah. Forest Green on Saturday. It's the start of a well. Swindon was the start of a tough run with teams up there. How are you looking at Forest Green? What do you make to them? Do you look into the league table at all at the moment? We know that they're obviously they're at the top of the league, aren't they? But that doesn't mean anything at this stage. We're going to Swindon, put a performance on like that, and we've set a statement out. That's for the rest of the league now, isn't it? To look at us. When you when you first came into that the first team because of the injury, did you find it tougher than you expected it to be, or? Were you ready for it? Um, a bit in between. I thought it was going to be harder, but I think that I've settled in quite well to the standard and how quick the game is. Because I'm from the bench, you think you can play us every week, but when you're on the, when you're field, it's completely different. And um, do you feel you're learning every game as it goes along? Yeah, definitely. You learn in training as well. You learn in, in games. It's even if you're playing against opponents who you don't train with, so you learn off them and you learn off your teammates around you. And how important is the players next to you in that Paul being? Yeah, I've had Pordy and obviously Naz on Saturday and it's great leaders in the team and they talk you through the game comfortably. So, Matty, obviously when you came in last year in January, you didn't play a lot at the end of last season. Were you a bit concerned whether you get another deal? Um, yeah, well, which any professional footballer would if you're not playing and you think, God, what's, what's going to happen in the summer? But I guess I just tried to work hard and Proved to Mark and Connery was originally here, and then the gaffer obviously Matt made the decision. I don't know who made the decision, but I must have seen, seen in the training and the games I did play that 
I deserved another contract. As you say, it's a, it's a big chance for you now. I mean, talk about contrasting fortunes, and it last weekend, not last Tuesday and Saturday, you sort of seen the high, the highs and lows already, haven't you? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Tuesday was a difficult night for us all, really, and fans as well and players. But I think Saturday we we got as a group and we put a pop performance on what the fans loved, and obviously it got kicked off for Saturday now. Do you feel that like Saturday was a bit more sort of the proper Bradford City after after Tuesday? Yeah, night? definitely. That was us on Saturday, and I think everyone knows that when they, if they watch the game. Tuesday we was off it and Saturday we'd bounce back and we'd put forms like that. Obviously being a local lad, presumably you had plenty of family and friends there last, last week, did you at Valley Pride? Yeah, yeah, we had plenty. <laughs> a bit unfortunate. Yeah, <laughs> I said I'll come see this one next time. <laughs> but yeah, fans and friends always messaging saying well done, well done, mm-hmm. which is obviously great to... Did you have anyone down at Swindon? No. No, it's, uh, no. So presumably you got some this weekend. Yeah, right? yeah, I've got a few coming this weekend. Hopefully you can sort of do it justice. Yeah, I'll tell them to come to this one. <laughs> And, and, and obviously, you're, you're a young dad, you know, you've got another one on the way yeah. quite soon. I mean, do you find that helps you in terms of, you know, coping with football? Because it's sort of, you know, I think Elliot Walt was saying it puts it in perspective a little bit. And yeah, definitely. You, level-headed. you think of Tuesday night's game when you think you've had a bad game and you, you, you don't go home and forget about it, but you go home and you, you can put a smile back on your face because you go and see your kids and, and you still think about the game, obviously. Yeah. Your mind's elsewhere a little bit. You yeah. get a bit consumed with it, can yeah. You? yeah. You don't want to take it out on anyone else, so you go home and your kids are obviously your kids are your kids, aren't you? So, as you, as you were saying about coming with Liam, I mean, you know, it, it must be it's very handy for you to have sort of you know an experienced man playing in the same position, it's it sort of day in, day out in the car, sort of thing, yeah, definitely. With obviously rides playing hundreds of games, it, it, he knows what he's doing, isn't he? so when he talks to you, it helps you quite a lot. Like they say about players having role models and that, but you know that, that one's on, on your doorstep. Yeah. Almost, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's exactly when I'm driving with him. He's always happy and talks about football and how am I doing? How's family? And he's always he's like a close friend, so it's handy for me really. And a bit away from that, next week's the FA Youth Cup. I know that and first round. I mean, a lot of the young lads. It's a big opportunity for them. You know, the, the, and obviously you was successful with Everton and the age group sides. I mean, how important things like the Youth Cup when it's you know it's a big occasion for you know for these young 17, 18 year olds. I really I used to love waiting for the Youth Cup because you get if you get through the first I think it's first two rounds you get you get a big club. When I was at Berry, we got Man United away at Old Trafford. Yeah, yeah. That's you can't get much more than that, can you? At seventeen. <laughs> what, what was that like? I mean, you know, I, I know obviously Old Trafford would be pretty empty, but it still must have been. Yeah, yeah. There's still still it's Old Trafford and. Playing against like the likes of Rashford and Twin Zerbi and mm. people like that, and you think, look at them now. Because mm. I think you know, say it is, you know, it's the FA Cup for the for the lads. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah def- definitely. That's what it is. It's the FA Cup for the youth, obviously. And there's no better feeling when you're in the youth team waiting for the FA Youth Cup draw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, it, and it can, can be a springboard, can it? I know some of the lads here, have, some of the younger lads have come through the youth team and done very well. You know, people, you know, that's like Finn, King yeah. Scales. You know, yeah, they've said they played Chelsea. Mm-hmm. You can't have so much more playing a Premier League team in the FA Youth Cup, can you? Presumably, even at that age, you can see you can see what you're up against. Yeah, yeah, you can see the standard they're at and the standard that obviously we're at. What's so. the score at Old Trafford? Do you remember? 1-0 to United. 1-0? Yeah. Were you better lucky then? We should have won. The sec- first half I got battered. Mm. The second half, we should have had three or four chances to score. They scored quite late then, as well. It's good early on when they was on yeah. top and then we just rode it out from there. <laughs>